Good morning, everyone. On today's show, it's time to talk about how the private lobby went last night with top tier rated. Now, with voice enabled and actually talking to each other. What a revolutionary concept, right? Uh, in addition, this morning, we're going to have a follow up to the ongoing discussion about copyright abuse on YouTube because for the first time, I'm actually in the loop on something. I have some evidence to present that maybe can help out people involved. I don't know because, again, I'm not involved, but uh, we're going to talk about it today. Maybe we can finally get some clarity on what actually has been happening and this will help some people out. All this and more on today's episode, the Level One Podcast. Hello. Fancy meeting you here. Welcome to the show. It is Tuesday, the 11th. You've got to be kidding me. It's Tuesday, the 11th of June, 2024. And my laptop is telling me I need to do a Windows update. <laughs> just, we just talked about this not a week ago. Oh my God. Yo, Windows. Windows, seriously, can get fucked. This is ridiculous, dude. Are you kidding me? What a joke. Another update for Windows. I just did all the updates. And I just redid all my browsers, not even a week ago. And now they want me to do it again. Get the fuck out of here, man. Here, advanced options. Yeah, so now, because I have, they're giving me the option to put it off for a while again. So I'm just going to do that right now. <clears throat> there. Okay. Leave me alone. I just, seriously, I told them to leave me alone for a month. What a joke. Microsoft telling me what to do with my equipment that I own. Anyway, by the way, the color's fixed. I'm wondering because yesterday I noticed on camera I looked a little yellow and I tried adjusting everything and I still looked yellow. And actually someone had left a comment. They were like, um, we think what happened is your shirt, that blue shirt, for some reason changes the color adjustments of my camera because it's automatic and basically makes me look too yellow. So I was like, oh, maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's just that particular shirt because here I am wearing this shirt. And I look fine today, right? Actually human. So anyway, how you guys all doing? I hope you're doing well. And I welcome you to the podcast. We have uh, some interesting topics to discuss today. Obviously, what I'd like to do is get you guys caught up, if you weren't here last night, on how the lobby went with uh, my friend Brian, who goes as top tier rated over on Twitch, uh, Street Fighter 6 stream, and a variety of characters played, and good gameplay. Actually, we played longer than I thought. I thought we were only going to play for 90 minutes. We played for a good over two and a half hours. Um, and it went really well, in my opinion, despite some connection issues on and off. Um... And people really seem to like the fact that there was banter between us. At the same time, there's definitely some stuff that's lost doing a stream like that. So I like to talk with you guys about that so we can maybe try to figure out the happy medium. All right. This is the first time I did a stream like that. So I definitely want to, you know, discuss room for improvement, stuff like that. Okay. But also the other big topic today is going to be a follow up on all of these false copyright issues on YouTube. Essentially, if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, People are, well, people have been saying for years and years now, this is not a new thing, that people have been impersonating me on YouTube and issuing false DMCA takedown requests against various pieces of content, whether it's uh, videos on YouTube, streams on YouTube, posts on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, and, and other stuff too. And I keep telling everyone, I'm never involved in it. I have nothing to do with it. I don't have time for that shit. I don't care. Like, most content that people make on YouTube of me is fair use you understand that i would argue the only stuff that's not fair use could be a live restream because then you're literally giving away my stream 100 in its entirety for free 
and you're not really transforming it, you're just talking over it live, which isn't allowed. That would be the equivalent of, oh, a new movie just released, stream the whole movie and talk over it. You can't do that, you see? You have to have a limited amount of editing or a limited amount of content shown, or else you're basically redistributing that illegally. But even then, you know, I'm not even arguing that. That's not the point here. What I'm telling you is I haven't at all done any takedown requests against the people who are saying that I have. I'm not involved in it whatsoever. And over the years, every once in a while, we have this discussion again. And I say, it's not me. I don't know why you think it's me. I keep telling you YouTube system is broken. They just grant anything because it's automated and it's stupid and it gets fooled all the time. And I even went last year, I had an hour long conversation with YouTube support. I documented it. I have the conversation saved. And at the end of the conversation, here's what YouTube told me. You have no legal responsibility to do anything about it because if you say you're not doing it, then you can't reverse it or take it down because you're not involved. The people who are being false stricken need to have legal counsel and contact us. That's actually what they said. And I said, so you're literally saying that if you want someone to get help with false takedowns, you want them to have a lawyer contact you or even sue you. And they didn't say that. They said, oh no, not sue, but have a lawyer contact us. So according to YouTube, and this was right on them. I have this document. I saved this conversation just in case it ever came up again, okay? If you need help with a false DMCA, pay thousands of dollars to get a lawyer just to talk to them. Otherwise, they don't care and they won't help you at all. That's what they told me, okay? So my hands are off. I have nothing I can do. I've tried, all right? The thing is, it persists. People tell me all the time that they're still getting false strikes and stuff. Um, now, some people are nicer about it. They'll contact me and be like, hey, is there anything you can do? Can you, can you confirm or deny if this was you? And, you know, and other people are just complete scumbags about it. And they're like, oh, how dare you? It's either you or it's one of your friends or someone associated with you doing it. And you obviously condone it. And we're going to sue you and we're going to do this and that. And I'm always like, these people are so unhinged. Like, again, I have nothing to do with it. YouTube outright stated I can't help it. I have it in writing. There's nothing that can be done against me at all because I'm not doing it. If anything, it would have to be you sue YouTube for damages or whatever it is for their broken copyright system. I'm literally not involved. I can't do anything about it, right? So the, the threats being thrown at me are so ridiculously frivolous and stupid. I mean, you have to be a moron to threaten me because I'm not involved in it, okay? And in fact, I hate to say it, the reason why all this is happening is because of malicious uh, activity towards me over the years. If People didn't idiotically dox my address, dox my phone number, dox all my personal information and put it on the internet. No one would be able to do a false copyright claim in my name. But these morons, a decade ago, as soon as I moved out here, they doxed me and put my address on the internet. The moment that they found out my phone number but through a, uh, a web host, they put that out there. So that's what happens. It's like, you know what I say? You play with the bull, you get the horns. That's, that's, people are going to use this shit to do whatever they want because you put it out there, right? So, I have an update on this this morning. You might be saying, why are you talking about it particularly today? Well, first of all, apparently there's been a big wave of it going on again because, again, I got more threats. I keep getting threats. I'm getting fucking DMs and fucking emails and shit everywhere. Oh, I'm going to get I'm gonna get you. It's going to spite you. And I'm not doing it. I don't know what you expect from me. I've already contacted YouTube. They won't do anything about it. I mean, you know, I'm... What do you want the person who's not involved in the process and told outright you can't help to do to help? I just don't know. Well, guess what? I actually did get a piece of information from YouTube. I got contacted about one of these takedown requests. It's the first time I've ever seen this happen. So I want to be transparent about it. Now, here's the thing. People might say, well, what are you doing this for? Aren't you, are you helping your trolls? Would this possibly help trolls? Maybe. But. This isn't about helping anyone. This is about doing what's right. A crime is being committed, all right? Someone is doing identity theft and fraud, all right? And it needs to stop. It doesn't matter who it benefits or, or whatever. What matters is that outright things that are against the law stop happening. That's what the concern is for me. I don't want crimes to be committed. See what I'm saying? <clears throat> So, I'm going to go ahead and show you some stuff this morning about something I received. I'll explain. However, sadly, I feel like this is a one-off situation, and I don't know if this is representative of what's really been happening. 
or maybe it is. Maybe this is actually going to give us evidence of what's been going on all along. I don't know, but we'll get to that. Okay. Okay. So undoubtedly now this podcast will have more viewership and you're going to have all my trolls rewatching it and everything because they're going to want to know what the hell I'm talking about. You know, we'll see. I mean, again, I, I'm a transparent guy when it comes to this shit. I have nothing to do with it and I want it to end, but I, I don't know what else I can do to help when YouTube has stonewalled me. They refuse to listen. All right. Okay. So first off, before we get to that, I want to talk about yesterday. I want to talk about the schedule for the week. Um, and then, then we'll get to this topic. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> yesterday I did my DSP versus the internet clips react show over on DSP reacts. Why was it on a Monday instead of a Sunday? Well, because on Sunday I was doing the live react to the Xbox game showcase. Um, and because of that, I couldn't do the react show on the normal day. So we just bumped it a day. It went down fine. It was a good variety of clips. We actually got uh, decent support. It went well. So once again, good. Now, if you are a member over there, the thread is already posted up on the channel page on the community tab to post up your videos for next week. So please do so. And FYI, next week, the show will be on its usual Sunday slot on the day stream. Okay, cool. Last night, I did a special challenge lobby with Brian, aka Top Tier Rated in Street Fighter VI, and it was the first time ever we got voice chat set up. Now, sadly, setting up voice chat for this thing was not very easy, you see, because Brian plays on PC, and I play on PS5, so it's cross-platform, and there's no cross-platform chat on PS5, there's no cross-platform chat through Street Fighter VI. They might say, well, how did we end up setting this up? We had to use Discord, and even then, even though Discord now has an integration with PS5, there's no Discord app on PS5. You can't just go on PS5, open an app, message your buddy, and start talking. I don't know why, because that would make sense, but they never did that. Instead, listen to this convoluted way that you have to do it. You have to set up on another platform, whether it's your phone, whether it's PC, you have to have Discord installed and set up previously before you can use it on PS5 on another platform, okay? Then, when you want to do a voice chat on your PS5, you have to have your PS5 on and ready to go, including having everything already plugged in and, and good to go, like your microphone, everything has to be already pre-set up. Then you have to boot Discord on the other device, again, whether it's your phone or PC, you have to start a conversation with the person you want to voice chat with. Then you have to initiate the voice call on that device. Okay. Then when you're in the voice call, you have to open a hidden menu by tapping the screen and it opens up a special menu with options. And then in the special menu that's already hidden, there's a second hidden menu where you have to take your finger and drag upwards on the hidden menu, which opens another menu you can't see. And in that menu, there's an option that says, transfer this to PS5. It's one of the most stupid convoluted things I've ever seen. Whoever designed that process should literally need to get retrained. I can't imagine anyone actually designing this process and being like, oh, this is good and intuitive and easy to figure out. I was online looking at different tutorials for it, and they were all different because they keep changing Discord. And the app now doesn't even look like how the app looked a year ago. So no one even has like an update on how to do it. So everything looks different. Everything's hidden. I was like, this is so stupid. It, it took us like 15, 20 minutes to figure it out. It should have taken two seconds. Okay. Anyway. <clears throat> so after you transfer the call to PS5, then the voice call enables. And then if you press the, the menu button on your PlayStation controller, it'll open up a menu for Discord, which now has options like volume adjustment and things like that. So what we had to do is we had to make it so that Brian's voice was much louder because the game was overpowering him. So I, I bumped it many levels towards his voice versus just the game. And, uh, and then when we started, it actually sounded, I think it sounded pretty good. The, ch the stream chat seemed to feel like it sounded pretty good. I'm not sure. I didn't see many comments on demand yet about that. Obviously, I need your feedback, guys, on, you know, <clears throat> was the voice level with the game? Do you think the game was too low? I'm not sure. I watched back the video, and I thought at times it sounded good, and at times maybe the voice was a little loud. I'm not sure. Um, but, man, I really what I liked is that we could talk about the matches. We could joke around a little bit. We were having fun talking and hanging out while we were playing Street Fighter. Um, <clears throat> so the lobby, like I said, it lasted a while. It was over two and a half hours. 
And Brian mostly played Mino. Every once in a while, he would switch to a character like Kami or Ryu or Akuma, but it was mostly Mino who's his main character. Totally okay with that because I want practice against these characters. You know, Mino, almost no one uses her anymore. So if I don't get practice, you go online, you face her, you're probably going to get spanked around, right? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And so, um, it was fun. And the connection, eh, he's on the East Coast of the United States. I'm on the West Coast. So we're basically like polar opposites of the country. So it gave us like a 90 millisecond connection. In reality, it's not that bad. Okay, it really isn't. It wasn't that bad. But the weird part was we started yellow bar connection, which is questionable, but okay. At times, it dipped to orange. Once, it went to red. And you got to ask the question, what would cause that? My modem is literally in this office only for use on my streams. That's all it's used for, to stream and to upload. And I never do both at once. So all I was doing was streaming the stream and playing the game online. What could have caused a giant fluctuation in quality? And Brian said the same thing. Like He's not doing anything else on his. So something to do with infrastructure in the United States when it comes to the internet. It's just not great that you could get giant fluctuations like that. But for the most part, the connections weren't that bad at all. Like, I'm not complaining about lag or anything like that. It was decent. And now I had dramatically reduced input lag from the last time I fought Brian a few weeks ago because I'm now on PlayStation 5, 1080p, 60 frames, 120 hertz using VRR. It's like night and day different. My moves coming out in immediately and everything. <clears throat> I don't feel like I'm playing underwater. And it showed. You could tell, you know, some of the things that were really getting me last time I was able to evade and stuff, which is good, obviously. You know, when you're trying to have a fun lobby with someone, you want to be able to play your best. And last time I know I wasn't because the, the connection was bad because of the, the, the input delay. Uh, and now most of that is gone, which is excellent. Um, so we had a good time. You know, I played with all of my characters. Uh, so that would be Honda, Lily, Dalsim, Zangief, and Blanca. And I also used a little bit of Akuma when we were messing around. We actually enabled Shin Akuma, and we did his two supers that are special super moves in the game. Um, I, I probably I was like, oh, I'm probably never going to do that. And then we were able to do it. I was like, oh, that's neat, because I never would have seen it otherwise, right? <clears throat> so that was cool. And, uh, you know, we had some good sets. Basically, you know, it was funny because Brian's like, the characters who, who I have, uh, I dislike the most in this game are the characters you use, but that's good because now he can get practice against them in a non-competitive environment. It's not like winning or losing against each other matters here. It's just leveling up and practicing, right? So that's cool, all right? Because now he'll be able to learn and you're not, you're not oh, I lost at a tournament or whatever, right? And that's cool. So, uh, and I agree, you know, the, some of these characters, these oddball characters can be very tough to fight when you don't know what's going on because you don't face them enough. You know, that's one of the things that happens to me is I don't face these certain characters enough online. And then when I face them, I get, I get bodied. I'm like, what's going on? So, <clears throat> it was pretty good, I would say. Um, however, the one glaring thing that was different with this Street Fighter VI stream and others was I had little to no interaction at all with the stream chat. Why? Because I've explained to you guys, if I'm in a party with other people and I'm playing and I'm talking to them, that's where my attention is. My attention was barely going to the stream chat. You know, people were super chatting and it was taking like 20 minutes to get a shout out. Tips were coming in and I wasn't shouting them out immediately because I was playing. And I know that probably turned off some people, you know. In, in fact, I'll be honest with everyone. At first, I think people were excited. And then when I started playing, they were just into the gameplay. And then that was it and realized, oh, there's like no interaction on this stream. And some people were upset about that. Of course, that also opened up the stream to trolling because people think, oh, look, it's, it's you know, it's freedom to do whatever we want in the chat. And I know for a fact that idiots were being stupid in the chat and I didn't really see it or catch it because I was playing the game. Okay. So I apologize if you were here last night and you were having issues with it. I, you know, it's the first time doing it. What I might have to do is try to make sure that a moderator can be there for a night when we do that so that a moderator can take care of the chat because I can't look at it when I'm, I'm playing and talking to Brian. You know what I mean? And the other thing is, when it comes to contributions, right? On a normal Street Fighter stream, there'd be a, a few people who are regulars who usually contribute to it, right? And then you get a few odds and ends here or there, maybe a super chat or whatever. And that's great. Well, last night, what happened was I think people realized I wasn't shouting anything out. And so it just stopped. And then thankfully, I want to say to Dan, the man, thank you. He did a really big tip. 
and obviously then the stream was supported for the rest of the night and i'm like so i don't have to worry about this right not a big deal but that's not always going to happen you know so like i said i think what we need to do we need to find like a happy medium like maybe what i'll do is play for like 20 minutes but then say okay it's time to take like a a, a two minute break i want to talk with the chat i want to shout stuff out i want to have that interaction because again this is exactly what happened with the other co-op that I did with Brian years ago, if you remember, we played Destiny 2, we played Apex Legends. The number one complaint I received is that when I'm playing with other people, all chat interaction ends. And therefore, people find that the stream isn't as good because they wanted to have me interacting with them, not with somebody else. Now, some people disagree. Some people like the fact to see me interacting with someone else other than stream chat because it's a rarity these days. So, like I said, I think it really is about finding the happy medium. It is, okay? Um, overall. You know, I had a great time uh, playing with Brian. And Brian and I, of course, are going to talk about future streams. I don't know if it's going to be a regular thing. I don't know if it's going to be maybe every once in a while we just do one. You know, we'll talk about it. What we did talk about was other games, right? Like other games to possibly play. But really right now, all the games that he plays are games that have been out for so many years. I would be starting so far behind, like Fortnite. Are you shitting me? Me trying to learn competitive Fortnite now? What's the point? I'll be so far behind, it'll take so much effort and time to learn. It's not worth it. Plus, I'll be honest, I don't really like Fortnite. Rainbow Six Siege, same thing. I mean, this is a game that's been out, what, seven years? Like, I'm never going to get into a competitive nature in that game, even if I tried. It's too much of a starting from behind, right? But in the future, with other games, like, one thing he threw out there was Warzone. I was like, yeah, you know what? When Black Ops 6 comes out, and you know within a month or two they're going to drop the new Warzone, I always check that out. I would be down for playing with Brian and that, maybe joining together, making a, a, a team, and trying to learn warzone together because that probably be way more fun than playing it solo with all the bullshit right so that could be cool um <clears throat> so fyi yes in the future there's a possibility we may do stuff together that's not street fighter right now street fighter would definitely be the the focus right but <clears throat> okay jasper he's being silly it's time to go to the floor buddy all right <laughs> all right <clears throat> So yeah, Street Fighter will be the focus, but we'll see moving forward if we want to do anything else. Now, the funny part was, so I, my stream goes offline, and I wanted to finish having a conversation with Brian, and I'm, I'm talking, and I talk, and I talk, and I talk, and I listen. It's like, he's not talking back. I said, Brian, are you there? And I realized I turned off my PS5, which closes the fucking Discord. I was sitting here. I'm not even kidding you. I talked for like five minutes. And then I looked, and I, and I had it off. I was like, I'm a fucking complete idiot. I'm <laughs> talking to myself for five minutes like a dunce. <laughs> so then, <laughs> so then I, you know, we talked offline or off of the off of the PS5 Discord afterwards. So, but anyway, so I will talk with Brian about when we'll do it next. I don't know if it, you know, I know we're de we definitely will do it next. I just don't know when yet. Again, it has to do with his schedule and everything. You know me, like, usually I like to play Street Fighter two, three times a week on late streams. Um, but I don't know how, you know, how often we're going to be able to do it. Coming up, we got a new game next week. One week, week from today, Still Wakes the Deep. We got the Elden Ring DLC coming up just a couple days after that. And then just a couple days after that is the Street Fighter VI uh, expansion with Bison. Bison's coming out. So, oh, excuse me. I don't realistically know how much I'm going to be playing Street Fighter V. Or excuse me, I keep saying Street Fighter Five, Street Fighter Six between then and now. We'll have to see. We'll have to talk about it and figure it out. Okay. Hmm. Cool. All right. So that's what happened last night. It went well. Videos are live. Check them out. They're on demand here on the channel. I hope you enjoy them. In this case, last time around, my editors had put together a special video that featured the two plus hours of us talking with each other and playing from each perspective. In this case, they didn't do that. Reason being, Brian didn't have his camera on and the voice chat of Brian was already on my stream. So there was really no point of showing head to head. It would have showed exact visuals, exact same audio. It would have been the same, you see? So that's why they didn't do it that way. So just go ahead and watch the two videos. One's an hour, one's like an hour, 40 minutes because we went late. And I hope you enjoy it, okay? Now, Let's talk about the schedule for the rest of the week so you guys know what's going on. This week is going to be loaded with Fallout 4, unless you guys have an issue with that. But there's a good reason why. So let's talk about it, okay? Okay. So today, it is the probable conclusion of Crow Country. Right now, we're around five and a half hours into it. Everyone says the game is nine to ten hours long. 
But from what I'm to understand, we're heading into the end game right now. Like, there's only... I have to go underground and do a few things. Like, I have to go underground, and I have to fill an acid vial. I have to use that acid vial to solve a puzzle. That gets me the golden key. That gets me to the area with a battery, and the battery is apparently how you beat the game. But also, there's, like, another area that's an electrified door, and I don't know what's past there. So I have a few things left to do that all require me to use these elevators that go underground, and I don't know how big the underground area is or if there's new puzzles or anything down there, but we're basically close to beating it. I'm feeling we may beat it on stream today. If we do, great. I've loved Crow Country. It's been a great throwback, you know, classic era survival horror style game, and I hope that you'll stick around and enjoy it. If we don't beat it today, that's fine. We could always do a night stream coming up <clears throat> over the next week where we wrap it up. So let's see realistically how far we get i don't know because i don't spoil myself on these games but we may beat crow country today we'll find out okay tonight on the late stream ladies and gentlemen it is the first time ever i'm doing a full stream of stardew valley i have never done this before i've played stardew valley twice once seven years ago during an indies marathon another time <clears throat> there was like a fill and chill event or something like that and i played it for like an hour and then i recently played it during another indies marathon but each time I played it, I played it for like an hour, okay? So I didn't even get past the intro. Tonight is an actual real stream of the game, okay? Two plus hours of gameplay. I'm planning to hopefully get past the intro, actually see what the meat of the game looks and plays like. Um, Because people are saying there is an actual story to it. There's dungeons in it and stuff. And I was like, I didn't even know that. I thought you just broke shit. That's it, right? So tonight should be fun. Obviously, I hope you guys will come by and hang out with me for it um, and see how, you know, how it goes. People have been asking for this for a long time. So I guess we'll see how it goes, you know, and if people who wanted it show up and engage in support with the stream. You know what I'm saying? Like, you ask for it, you ask for it, you ask for it. All right, I'll finally give it to you. Let's do it. Hopefully people show up for it. All right? So that'll be tonight, 6.45 p.m. Pacific time. And uh, I hope that you will hang out with me. And enjoy this uh this stream okay tomorrow it'll be fallout 4 on the day stream and it will be street fighter 6 on the late stream with street fighter 6 i'm either going to play with dal seam and do some casual matches and then go online ranked with him or i'm gonna play with akuma again um i'm on the fence about this like i like akuma but i feel like it's sadly time got away from me here right <laughs> it really did like, with the update and everything, and me trying to relearn all five of my characters and their changes, I do feel like I, I wish I had more time to play Street Fighter Six because I really wanted to learn Akuma, but now we got two weeks, and then Bison's out. So it's like, wow, I have two weeks to basically play as much as I can, maybe do some ranked with each character, and, you know, with me only playing two, three times a week, that even takes away from that. Will I even get that done? I don't know. <clears throat> so far, I've only played ranked with Honda. That's it. So, um, I'm on the fence about what to do tomorrow night. I'll think about it, but maybe it makes more sense just to stick to Dal Seam and try to, to, like I said, get better, play ranked. We'll see. Okay, we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm off on Thursday. When I come back on Friday, it's going to be more Fallout 4 and Friday Night Fights and Street Fighter 6. Saturday is going to be Fallout 4 and a late night stream of something indie. It could be more Stardew Valley or it could be Noita. Or it could be we need to finish Crow Country. We need an extra stream. That's what it'll be. So it really depends. Now, you might be saying, what the hell? Why are you playing so much Fallout 4? You're playing it Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. There's a very good reason. Once Still Wakes the Deep comes out, I'm going to be playing a lot of that. And then immediately, the DLC for Elden Ring comes out. And then I'm going to be playing that tons. So I want to get in as much Fallout 4 gameplay as I can do now before it gets held up, and I don't get to play it for a while, you see? We all knew that the Fallout 4 playthrough was something as filler until new stuff comes out. Once the new stuff comes out, that takes priority. So, Still Wakes the Deep and Elden Ring's Shadow of the Erd Tree will be the focus, and then, of course, Bison's coming out in Street Fighter, so those three will be the focus, and Fallout 4 may end up being like a random night stream here or there or something like that, okay? <clears throat> so, um... That's why so much Fallout 4, okay? Then Sunday is going to be React Day. DSP versus the Internet on DSP Reacts and the continuation of Rise of Nightmares Retro React. Excuse me, Retro Replay. Oh, no, Retro React. But...
I'm getting too old for this. I can't even remember the names of my own shows. <laughs> That's pretty bad. Like, wait, what is it? Is it Retro React or Retro Replay? I can't even remember the names of my own shows. Good lord. I'm just going to reload. It is Retro React, by the way. I knew that, but getting too old for this. Okay, so, yes, Retro React to Rise of Nightmares uh, on Sunday night of next week. And then that Monday, likely, even more Fallout 4 and Street Fighter, because then that Tuesday is the release of Still Wakes to Deep. It'll probably be like Still Wakes to Deep and then maybe like Stardew Valley. And then Wednesday, Still Wakes to Deep, and maybe Street Fighter or, or something else. And then that Friday is the Elden Ring DLC. And once the Elden Ring DLC comes out, expect a lot of it because if it is as long as everyone's saying if it really is going to be like 40 hours long i gotta play a lot of this i'm probably going to be playing it almost every day every once in a while i'll probably give it a break but i'll probably be playing it like two days in a row then the break for Re for react day then more two days in a row and then maybe at the end of the week i give it a break for a day just expect a lot of elden ring when it comes out okay just forewarning everybody all right <clears throat> so um that's what's going on in the next week to week and a half, you know, if anything changes, obviously we can talk about it. I'll let you know. But that is the plan for now. Okay? Exactly. You want to play it when, when it's popular. I want to play this Elden Ring DLC when people are going to be coming by to watch it, not a month later when the hype has died down. Exactly right. Plus, I'm excited for it. You know, I just replayed Elden Ring, the magic build. I beat it. I legitimately beat Melania with a magic build in two hours. And I was, like, impressed with how well I did. And, like, I want to keep that going. I want to keep that momentum going. Right? <clears throat> okay, so folks, it's time for our second topic of the day. Let's talk about these false copyright strikes that are being issued in my name. I've already covered the groundwork of where we are, that I'm not involved. I contacted YouTube. They blew me off and don't want to help whatsoever. They say the people who are getting the false strikes should get a, basically get a lawyer and contact YouTube, and that's where it's it. That's the end of my involvement. Literally, when these happen, these false takedowns, I never get notified. I don't get any kind of a heads up for any of this ever happening okay so i actually don't know what process people are using in order to issue false copyright strikes in my name i mean it doesn't make sense that you should even be able to do that but here here's the thing here's the truth <clears throat> if youtube has a legal process by which you can f issue a copyright strike against someone a takedown request to set you say someone infringed my copyright would it not make sense, because this is a legal process, that you legally verify the identity of the person before you issue this? Does that not make sense? That you should make sure the person is who they say they are before you go through with it? Because just like anything, if you accidentally get fooled by someone and then you do something in a name that you're not authorized to do it, you are legally responsible. I don't know if YouTube realizes this, okay? But they are legally responsible for false copyright strikes. Yes, they are. If they're not properly verifying that it's a legit claim, they are going to one day get sued. And they will be responsible for all of this false takedown shit. Now, I don't think anyone wants to deal with that. That could take years and years to hash out in court. But I guarantee you it's going to happen one day. All right? So here's how YouTube should do it. Okay? Oh, we received a request saying that this is infringing content. Please verify your identity. And you might say, well, how could they do that? Well, here's the thing. If you're a legal adult somewhere, you have to have a legal form of identification. Depending on where you live in the world, that could be different. Here in the United States, we either have actual legal ID cards that you get with the state you live in, or you get a state driver's license. You should have to provide that to YouTube. Why don't you have to? You literally have to provide your driver's license with almost any legal thing you do ever in the United States. If you're going to get married, if you're going to um, open a bank account, if you're going to any of these things that are like a legal thing, a big thing, you have to provide evidence of who you are to prove that you're not committing fraud and impersonating someone. Otherwise, you could be opening fake accounts and, and you know, who's legally responsible for those, right? So why the hell is it? Honestly that YouTube doesn't require you to verify that you're real. 
They should be requesting every time you issue a takedown request, please provide your 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 driver's license or your legal ID card to prove that you're real. Okay. Now you might say, well, that's just the U.S. Correct. There are other ways to do it worldwide. Every country has something. There's no country where everyone's anonymous. That's ridiculous. So YouTube could do it, but the truth is YouTube's too fucking lazy. You understand? YouTube wants everything automated. They don't want to have staff. They want everything to be hands-off, AI run, and everything easy to do. And because of that, they're cutting corners, and this is why we have the situation we're in right now. There is literally no fucking reason why YouTube should not be verifying the identity of anyone who puts in a copyright claim. But they don't. They just say, give some general information, we grant the claim. It's insane that they would do that. They're putting themselves at giant legal liability and everyone else as well, okay? Now, in regards to the situation with me, all these fake takedowns that have been happening in my name for years now, I never get notified. I never have any involvement with it. <clears throat> on each of my YouTube channels, there is a copyright page. When you click on it, it shows all the takedowns associated with your channel. My, these never show up for me. So what that means is that someone has found a way to issue takedowns in my name, but they're not related to my channel. Now, I want you to think about that for a second. How could someone say, I own this video, okay? I'm the owner of this video. I think someone infringed my copyright. Here's my, my information of who I am and where I live and blah, blah, blah. Here's the link to my video and here's the link to the video that's infringing, okay? How are you prove you're the owner of the video? Well, you have to be logged into a YouTube channel that that video exists on, correct? That's what I always thought, but again, it can't be the case because these are not on my channel, right? They're not. And I'm like, so how are they doing it? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I received an email notification of a takedown request that was falsely done in my name. And then I received a follow-up email from YouTube, which is very interesting. And I investigated a bit and I want to share my, my findings with all of you this morning. This is intriguing. And if this helps anyone, I hope, you know, hey, I hope it does. But the thing is, I don't know if it really will because I'm not sure how to figure this stuff out. Maybe other people know how to figure this out. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to show you step by step what happened. Okay. So back on Sunday night into Monday, it was like late overnight Sunday into Monday. I received the following email and that's it right there. Good, good luck reading it. All right, I'll try to blow it up. It's going to be a little blurry, but I just want you to take a look at this email and how funny it is. Take a look at what it says from YouTube copyright to darksidephilip at gmail.com. I do not have an email of darksidephilip at gmail.com. That doesn't exist. So right off the bat, this was someone messing around, making stuff up. However, I do have an email of dspgaming at hotmail.com. And they decided to CC me on the email for some reason. Okay, I don't know why, but they decided to CC me on that email. No idea why they would have done that. But okay, this is actually, the, I'm telling you, this is the first time that I've actually gotten CC'd on one of these. I sure these happen all the time and I'm never involved because they use fake email addresses. But they actually put one of my real emails in there for some reason. Okay, now, I was doxxed five zillion years ago. So, yes, my legal address is in here, and people already know it on the internet. So this isn't doxing because I, I've already been doxed a zillion years ago. You can't, I'm, I'm going to be redoxing myself. You're pretty dumb, right? Whose phone number is that? No one's, because that's an old phone number that I haven't had for a while. So that phone number is no longer valid. I don't know if anyone actually really has that phone number, but it ain't me. All right? So that phone number is not associated with me at all. Okay? So this is what I got. Copyright infringement notification confirmation. Thank you for your submission. Now, I didn't do this. And I went, I, trust me, when I got this email, I immediately went to all of my YouTube channels and I checked the copyright section and there's nothing there. So this was not issued through my channel 
This was done another way. Now, how? I don't know. And that's the thing that gets me. I don't know how they're doing it without ha actually involving my channel. If you take a look at the bottom, it says the URL of the alleged infringed content. If you go to that URL, you will find a video from last year from a YouTube channel called Superhound. And it's a detractor style video that basically says, oh, Phil's a liar and blah, blah, blah. Okay? It has like 100 views. So why someone would issue a copyright takedown against a, a channel that claims to be Superhound and have 100 views, I have absolutely no idea. All right? But this is the email I received, okay? So continuing on, I think this is the second half of it. Oh, no, this is the follow-up email. All right, so I got this email I got on Sunday, or, or Sunday into Monday, all right? And I'm like, all right, well, whatever. I don't know who this is. I don't know what this is. It has nothing to do with me. So I can't do anything about it once again, you know. I don't even have a way to contact YouTube about it. I've tried before and they ignore me, okay? All of a sudden, I got this email yesterday. Thanks for your removal request. We've received your request, but we need more information. Then you scroll down and it says, need more info. We're concerned some of your info in your takedown request may be fraudulent. Yeah, no shit. The whole thing's fraudulent. I've told you this already and you ignored me. Please understand your YouTube receives many fraudulent copyright takedown requests. And we take abuse of our copyright takedown process very seriously. We remind you that in your blah, 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 blah. So a bunch of blah, blah, blah nonsense, right? This is all, you can tell this is all form letter nonsense. Okay. Continuing on. This is the second half of this email. Okay. For each video in question, provide... Precise identification of the particular copywritten work or works allegedly infringed and the basis to do so reply to this email. If we don't get a response in seven days, your account could be terminated. You may be able to avoid termination if you retract your takedown request. So respond to this email if you want to do that, right? So what's hilarious again about this, there's a link here. It says you could take back your claim of copyright infringement anytime if you change your mind. If you click on that link, <clears throat> okay, it takes you to a YouTube channel. All right? But it's not my channel. So literally, YouTube is saying this YouTube channel is the one issuing the false takedowns. All right? But the problem is I can't figure out what the channel is. I'm going to show you why in a second. When I click on that, it takes you to your a copyright page. Like it's attempting to access a copyright page of a YouTube channel, but it says you don't have access to the channel. Again, I tried doing this from all three of my YouTube channels. It says you don't have access, which means it's not my channel doing it. It's another channel doing it. Okay. So what I did is I took the URL out of that link and I put it into YouTube because I wanted to see what channel is actually issuing these false claims in my name. And this is what comes up. So there's your channel URL, all right? It's already banned. Now, when was it banned? I have no idea. You would think that if this were the case, that if someone's doing false claims, right, and it got banned, didn't it get banned previous? Then why are they reviewing and trying to grant more claims? Okay? So FYI, this address is not re or, or not legit anymore all right it's just not it's not legit anymore someone was issuing false copyright takedowns in my name on their real youtube channel youtube was so idiotic that apparently they granted some of them but then got wind of it realized they were fraudulent and enough fraudulent ones came in and apparently they banned the channel but the question is how in the holy hell can someone be issuing takedown requests of, for content on my channels on a different YouTube channel? That doesn't even make sense, right? I don't get it. So you guys do with this as you will. This is the channel that is involved in the fake, this particular fake takedown request. I don't know who this is or who they were, right? But 
I want nothing to do with it. All right. The reason I'm showing you this is because I want to, you to understand. I, I there's nothing I can do. I'm not even involved in it. I try to access this from my channels. I, it's not there. I can't do anything with it. So for the record, just so everyone knows, I responded to this email and I said to YouTube again, hi, this is Phil Burnell. Yes, I have three YouTube channels and people keep impersonating me and try to taking down content falsely. They're, they're doing identity theft. This is not legit. I want all of these reversed. I do not authorize any of them. I spoke with you a year ago in your support chat and you told me you would not help me. So I don't know what else you, you want me to do. I'm telling you right now, they're not legit. Remove them. And that's what I said. And that was the email to them. So will YouTube read the email, use a, a, a iota of human intelligence and intellect and say, oh shit, this is a big problem. Let's fix it. Or will that go to their AI bots because they don't have any human staff and just sit there unread and never do anything, right? I don't know. You would wish that YouTube would read my fucking email and say, oh, okay, here's evidence that this is fake. Let's make sure this doesn't happen again. Let's take action. But no, I guarantee you likely, since everything's automated, the AI bot will have no idea what I wrote. It won't, it won't recognize anything in the email, right? And it's just gonna go into a fucking a wastebasket or a black hole, or an unread inbox, right? I just, I don't know what else to say, say to you guys. So to all the detractors out there that are being negatively affected, I I'm trying and YouTube doesn't care. I don't know what else to say. There's nothing else I can do. Like, I, I, again, I'm telling you what they told me a year ago. If you have issue, if people are hitting you with false copyright strikes, you have to get a lawyer. And the lawyer has to talk to YouTube about it to try to get it figured out and cleared up. I have no involvement. I tried to get involved. They ignore me. I did respond to this email. This is the first time I've ever gotten an email about one. I always am out of the loop. This is the first time one ever hit me. So I responded. Hey, it's not me. Please just clear all these up. But there's no guarantee YouTube's going to do it. They already apparently took action against that YouTube channel, whatever one it was. But <clears throat> again, I don't know what else this is. You know what I like? What was that channel? Can anyone figure it out? Again, here's the channel URL. I'm trying to be as transparent as possible. What YouTube channel is this? This is maybe one of many that maybe has been doing this, correct? It's blatant evidence that someone did a false takedown in my name. But what channel is this? It's already gone. I don't know. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so, I'm sorry, guys. I wish I had something else I could do. That's it. But for, again, from my my perspective and my well, anything I can do, this is it. If I get more, uh, <clears throat> if I get more of this, all right, I'll let you know. If I ha if I have more to respond to, I'll I'll let you know. I'll respond to it, and I'll always tell them, hey, has nothing to do with me. Leave it alone. You know, stop. Don't grant this. But Again, it seems like nonstop nonsense, and I can't stop it because they're, they're, again, how could you figure this out? How could you solve this? Literally, it's the easiest fucking thing. The moment, the absolute moment that a, a DMCA takedown is issued, request ID. Prove that you're the person. Show us your ID. Then we know it's you, correct? But they don't do that. They just grant it with no proving that anything is real. There is absolutely a legal requirement to confirm someone's identity to grant anything in a court of law. There is. You can't just have someone walk into court and say, oh, I'm so-and-so here. I'm here to represent. No, they have to prove who you are. So why on YouTube don't they do that? Because they're lazy. I mean, that's the only explanation. They're lazy. They want to not have staff to review anything. So they just skip that step. And they just shadow grant everything. And they feel just having AI clean everything up is the way to do it instead of actually having humans involved. <clears throat> so, all I'm going to say is, hey, if someone out there was ever mass hit with this kind of shit and it actually legit hurt your livelihood, get together with others of the similar and, and do a class action. That's what I would do. If I were involved... I would do a class action and I would say enough is enough. Let's get, let's get YouTube to fix this process. At the very least, they should have identity confirmation 
for DMCA takedowns. It should be absolutely what is requested or, or uh, required. Excuse me. Okay. So. <clears throat> More on here. So, um, yeah, guys, I'm sorry to bother you with all of this, obviously, but this is an issue. This is stupid. And uh, I hate that it happens, but it's life. And we got to at least talk about it every once in a while, right? I don't want to just ignore everything. Um, <clears throat> so, Jasper, here we go again. Jasper. <laughs> Jasper, what are you doing? You're going to fall. Careful. Oh, my goodness. The Jasper. He wants so much attention today. He wants attention today. Look at him. Demanding. He says, stop talking about this nonsense. Look, he's biting me. He says, stop talking about this nonsense. All right, all right. I will. We'll move on now. All right. So that's that. Again, if there's anything additional, if YouTube responds, if I get another email like that, right, any of this, I'll let you know. But for now, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not involved. I don't know, you know, what else to do about it. It seems like I'm not involved. I, again, it has nothing to do with my channels. YouTube needs to take action, not me. You have a URL. Do with it what you will. If you can figure it out who that was, they were issuing false, uh, they were issuing false DMCAs. Okay? There you go. All right. Let's continue, shall we? All right. Let's get to shout outs because now we're already past noon. Um, our first contribution of the day was from Agent Clappers. Nice name. Who says, let's get the party started. <laughs> Agent Clappers. <clears throat> Alrighty then. And then we got some tips to shout out. Okay. No Ubisoft Forward discussion? You really think something happened at Ubisoft Forward worth discussing? Are you serious? Did you even watch it? That was the most non-fucking event I think I've ever seen in my life, right? It was like nothing of substance on that fucking event. It was just fluff about bullshit you already knew, you know? They didn't need to do... What it is is everyone else... Oh, well, Sony did one. Xbox did one. We got to do one. No, you don't. <laughs> you know, if you really don't have anything extra to show, then, then don't have an event, you know? But, uh, no, I mean, particularly, I didn't see anything that uh, really perked my interest. If you guys have any interesting things you want me to bring up or look into, I can. But basically, the information was pretty identical to what we already knew, right? Okay. <clears throat> okay, let's continue. I received a dollar tip from Arcade Cup. Thank you to Arcade Cup for our first tip of the day. I appreciate that. Cool. I received a $12.18 tip. Uh, I guess it's an anonymous because there's no name associated with it. So first of all, let me play the animation and then we'll see what they have to say. I believe that is a currency conversion, by the way. That's why it's a weird amount. This is, I've had some dark times and your streams have felt like a constant friend for 15 years. You have a huge positive effect on people. I'm not sure you realize that. My life is great now. I hope you're here for another 15. Uh, while I struggle through fatherhood. Love you from our family to yours. Thank you so much. Whoever that may be, I'm happy to hear it. <laughs> Again, when I was, when I started on YouTube 16 years ago now, because yes, it's been 16 years. I was just some asshole dicking around. It was just meant to be something to kill time. Uh, you know, and to share my passion for games with the internet and to show my sense of humor. And it wasn't ever meant to grow into anything serious. It certainly was never going to be a job or anything for me. No one could even make a living on YouTube back then like that. You know what I mean? Like, couldn't even monetize gameplay. So it was just a, a little thing to do to kill time. And hey, look where we are now 16 years later. And so many people send me messages like this now. 
saying, you know, you may not realize it, but your content helped me in this way or that way or whatever. And I'm happy to hear that. Really, I am. I'm happy to hear that in some way I helped out people, whether it was inadvertently or not, you know, that's nice. So thank you for sharing and thank you for the support. Um, I received a $2 tip. Someone says, it's crazy to me, Switch OLED is more expensive than a Series S and not that much cheaper than a PS5 Digital or even a base Steam Deck. I understand many people love Nintendo at this point. People who are defending this are out of their minds. I mean, it's like we say, you know that Nintendo is in co competition with, with PlayStation and Xbox, right? You, you recognize that. I know that Nintendo is in competition. Nintendo doesn't know. If you ask Nintendo right now, they will literally say, oh, no, we're not in competition with them. You're like, what are you talking about? You're part of the home gaming market. Yes, you absolutely are. Some games that are on your console are also on theirs. They're like, no, we're our own thing. We do our own thing. And for me, this reminds me of the Apple mindset where we make our own, you know, uh, technology. We stand alone from others because we do things differently. And if you're part of our group, Right, it's almost like a almost like a, a a cult kind of part of our group, right? Whenever we do something, you absolutely uh must buy it. You must be a part of it. It's part of our it's a culture. Nintendo, Apple, these are cultures. Not even companies selling you a product. They act like they're some kind of a subculture where if you're part of it, you're part of this this group, this special group, this elitist group that's in the know that gets it, right? If you have Apple, you get it. You get technology. You totally are cool and hit. If you're get if you're with Nintendo, you get it. You get modern gaming. You understand what it's like. You got to get everything. You got to buy all their little amiibo figures for ten years to keep them afloat during an era when their console is failing. You got to get every piece of everything. You got to get the the Nintendo Super Premium monthly subscription, despite the fact there's like nothing on it. You got to pay that insane amount of money every month, right? You got to buy the Switch OLED, despite the fact that it's literally identical to the old Switch, except for slight tweaks here and there, and none of the improvements people actually wanted in a new model Switch. I keep going on and on. <clears throat> That's just how they are. So there's some people who are just in that mindset. Uh, Nintendo, Nintendo, Nintendo. Apple, Apple, Apple. Every year must buy a new iPhone, despite the fact it doesn't really improve that much. Eh, buy it anyway, right? That's how they are. So you're right. The Switch OLED was kind of a slap in the face to Nintendo fans. They said, hey, we want a Nintendo Switch Pro that has better processing power, that has a better graphics card, that has the stick drift solved. The stick drift on the Wiimotes is ridiculous that an entire console gen has had it and they never fixed it, right? We want this, we want this, we want this. Nintendo says, oh, that's nice. We give you none of that. We're going to give you a kickstand. We're going to give you like improved speakers and the screen will look a little better. And we're going to charge you an insane amount of money for that. <laughs> it's like, what? And then people ran out and bought it. Again, as I've said many, many times, when customers enable the bad behavior, the bad behavior will continue. If the customers stop enabling it, it will stop. All those people who complained about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, oh my God, I can't believe that Pokemon Scarlet and Violet looks so bad. I literally can't believe it looks like shit. And this is a console exclusive, so there's no excuse. It was designed specifically to the Switch. How could it be that bad? It was the best-selling Pokemon game of all time. So what incentive do they have to make a better Pokemon game when you bought the one that you said was awful, right? And you made it the best-selling game of all time. I just... You know? You, you can't... You can't... Sales results will dictate future behaviors with these companies. So if you wanted a Switch Pro, you shouldn't have bought the Switch OLED. If you wanted a better Pokemon, skip the Pokemon. That's shit. Yes, I bought the Pokemon game, but I am not the common consumer. You understand? I'm a content creator. I buy and play games in a different way than everyone else does. I'm certainly not you, right? <laughs> I'm someone who <clears throat> I bought it and I showed you how bad it ran. If anything, me playing the game is a display to you of the shortcomings of the game. It's very different than someone just buying it and playing it for themselves. You understand? Very different. <clears throat> okay.
All right, um, let's continue on here. No, I did not see the Dragon Age stuff that's happening right now. Yeah, that's literally happening like right now or did happen during my podcast, right? So no, I didn't see it because it just happened live. I'll have to check that out later and maybe talk about it tomorrow. Because obviously I'm interested. How does it play? How does it look? It looked way weird and cartoony and almost Fortnite Overwatch-esque from what they showed at the Xbox event. So obviously I'd like to see what it looks like, okay? Oh, excuse me very much. Sorry about that. I felt that one coming. That's disgusting. Okay. I received a generous $50 tip from your webcam supplier. All right. They said, I'm still a fan. Enjoy your content. Best wishes, my friend. Thank you very, very much. I wonder if this if this person is saying they're the one who donated the webcam uh, about a year and a half ago, right? If, if indeed that is who you are, thank you. Thank you for the generous tip. That is very much appreciated. It's anonymous, though. Oh, no, it's, I just I'll say your webcam supplier. I'll use the name. <laughs> and I want to say thank you because, man, that other webcam was so outdated and crappy. And this webcam, if you haven't noticed, has been a huge improvement. Sad that it doesn't run at 60 frames. It still runs at 30. But it it's so funny. This webcam claims it's 60 frames. It, it isn't. This webcam only runs at 60 frames in proprietary software that you would never use because you want to use it in OBS or other streaming software. The moment it's used with other software, it's locked 30. You can only get 60 frames through their software, which is really stupid. So anyway, the quality, though, is great. As you can see, quality of the visuals of this webcam way improved from my old one, which was always blurry as hell. Happy for that. Now my show has improved. Everything has improved. So thank you very, very much for donating the webcam a year and a half ago. And thank you for the tip today. I appreciate that. It's actually time for the uh, Gunner Glasses now. Tier 1 tips go. By the way, thank you to Agent Clappers for a second super chat that came through there. <clears throat> okay. What's up, Game Boy? How are you this morning? I received a $6.09 tip. He says the previous tip, the $12.18 tip, was actually uh, from him. Their name is Mark. It was 10 pounds that gets converted to USD. Gotcha. Keep doing what you're doing. I feel like you're back to your old self lately. Good luck. Have fun. And all those other phrases the kids use. <laughs> Thank you so much. I, th I think one thing that's going to be a key change is me enjoying fighting games again. Now that I have gotten rid of the input lag issue that I had forever, right? I think now, you know, I'm, I'm just going to enjoy Street Fighter again, which is great to be able to just enjoy and not be raging over, oh, I swear I'm trying to do this and nothing happens and stuff, right? That's a huge change, you know? And me being able to enjoy better visuals and everything here, pretty cool. Bobo X says, many leakers are fairly trusted Agree with each other and said the Switch Pro was definitely a real thing at one point, but the shortages from COVID at the time got it canceled. Apparently, that's why the Switch 2 is arriving so late. It was supposed to be a pro between them. Huh. Matt, how are you? Welcome to the stream. He says, I'm ready to enjoy some chill streams today. They should be. I think both Crow Country and Stardew should be some chill streams. Well, I tried Kuma again in Ranked. I literally just addressed this. All right? I said, coming up next tomorrow night, I could go back to Akuma. And try to relearn him because I really, I you know, at this point, I was on the path to learning him. And now I haven't played him in two weeks. I used him like three matches last night playing Brian and that was it. So I would have to basically have a whole night dedicated to trying to relearn Akuma again from the ground up, basically. You know, so it would have to be casual matches first to figure out, you know, combos, to figure out what's best in each situation. Um, And then after that, then I could consider taking him to rank. The thing is, I'm close. I'm four-star diamond. I had him in five-star diamond. So I feel like if I practice just a little bit, I could probably get him to master. But, you know, it's going to be tough. I can't just jump right in like that. I need to actually play with him again. So there would be a stream or two there of me kind of learning. And, you know, a lot of people are just of the impression they just want me to jump right in and start playing at a high level. And that's not possible, you know. Um, like I said, tomorrow I'm either going to be doing trying to relearn Akuma or 
I'm going to play with Dalsim a little bit, do a little bit of casual, and then jump into ranked with him. Because I already had my first ranked stream with Honda, and that was a success. So now I want to see if I can do the, the same with all my characters now with no input delay. So we'll see. What's for dinner tonight? I don't know. I don't know. Am I hot for Bison? Uh, no. I mean, I'm going to be honest. No. I, Bison is a character that I liked back in the day when he played like Bison, but then they changed him up for Street Fighter V. He played completely differently. And it looks like the Street Fighter VI version of Bison is Street Fighter V Bison, which I don't think I'm going to like. I, I'm going to try him. Don't get me wrong. Classic Street Fighter character, I'll give him a shot. But I don't know if I'm going to like him. He, is, look, he looks like he plays nothing like he used to. So, <clears throat> Jade, no problem. Good to have you here, even if you're not so interested in the games. It's good to have you hanging out. Of course, the return of the Bison hat for Bison content makes a lot of sense. <clears throat> I just received a $15 tip. Someone says, thank you for years of content. Hope you have a great stream today. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Anonymous Tipper. Off to a great start of support today, so thank you all for that. <clears throat> Am I iffy about Elena? Elena in Third Strike was very unique, a tricky character, not top tier or anything. Um, in Street Fighter 4, she played differently, but I didn't, at that point when she had come out, I really wasn't playing Street Fighter 4 at a competitive level or anything. So I never, I never knew if Elena was any good in Street Fighter 4 or not, and that's the last time we've seen her, right? So I can't... I'm interested in her. I think she's a tricky character to use. She's very different. She has these awkward attack angles and things. But I think she might be good in this one. I don't know. Generation Z says, in my super chat from last night, I missed it. Okay, I'm sorry. You and Brian should do more co-op streams. Two legends and, and friends. Excellent content. Thank you. Delta Kubo says, I'm up to gold rank now. 61% win rate. Any advice on improving hit confirms? You know... Hit confirms are tricky enough, and then trying to do them online, ugh. Online, they're just like, it's so hard. You have to be like damn perfect because you've got input delay, you've got latency in the connection as well. You have to visually see it and then react immediately to get that combo because, again, the idea of a hit confirm, for those who don't know what a hit confirm is, you throw out a move, let's say medium punch. If you see the medium punch hit, then once it's confirmed it hit, then you do the follow-up. So whether it's a special move, a drive rush to continue the combo, but that's a hit confirm. The idea of a hit confirm is you only do the follow-up attack once you've confirmed the hit connected. If you do the follow-up hit and you haven't confirmed it connected, let's say they block it and you do your next move, they get to punish that because it has recovery. So you want to make sure the hit that you threw out the medium punch hits them and then you do the next move. But offline, it's a lot easier to do. Playing this shit online, it's like you almost have to predict it. You almost have to guess that it's going to hit and then do the follow-up. For me, since I got reduced input delay, it's easier now, for sure. But before, it literally was a guessing game. So I, it's hard for me to really help you, Stealthy Kubo. It's not online, man. And especially, I don't know what your format you're playing. If you're playing on console, you're playing on PC, what your input delay is. Like, it's night and day for me now. I turned off the input delay. But if you do that and you're not using VRR, you're going to get screen tearing. That looks like shit. So, <laughs> you know, it's hard to say. Would I ever do a podcast with Brian? I don't know. It's something that, that I did, you know, briefly mention to him. I said, you know, I got a podcast and to be able to interview would be cool. Um... But I don't know yet. We're not in any talks about that yet. At this point, we're just, you know, I think getting consistent gameplay down is probably more important than having him on a podcast. If he was going to be on a podcast, it'd probably be cool to talk with him about a particular topic that pertains to his interests, correct? So, you know, we'll have to see about that. Shady Platinum just did a super chat saying, I'm a longtime viewer. Thank you for all the content. You're welcome, Shady Platinum. Thank you for the super chat. I also want to say thank you to those who've continued to watch Crow Country. You know, I did my second Crow Country stream over on Saturday night, and it, the, the stream did decent. The, the videos are doing all right, and the, the positivity continues. The nice positive comments on those videos continued, and I'm very happy for that. 
you know? Again, a lot of my videos don't get any comments. So it's nice to get some positive comments from the community on those videos. Thank you for that. All right, we have a little bit of extra time. So if anyone has any questions they'd like to ask, please tag me in the chat. If any other contributions come in, I will shout them out. But we got a little bit of extra, not too much though. Big Boss just did a super chat and asks, what's the longest stream you've ever done? 24 hours? Uh, no, I don't think I ever did a 24 hour stream. Uh, for me, I'm not of the opinion that anyone should do that unless they have a safe situation set up. So for example, let's say you're going to do a 24 hour stream, but you're going to tag in and out with someone else you'll you'll do like five or six hours then you take a break someone else comes in you maybe do co-op for a little bit but then one person goes and rest the other person continues i don't think any one particular person should be sitting stationary in a chair streaming for 24 hours that's insanely unhealthy for you i don't see why anyone would even want to do it besides honestly ignorance the human body is not meant to be like that sedentary ongoing it's actually very harmful for your health okay um, so I definitely do not recommend that. <clears throat> so the longest stream I've ever done? I don't know. You know, my marathons run from like 1045 in the morning, sometimes to, you know, eight, sometimes 9 p.m., so almost 12 hours. I don't know if I, I don't time myself. You know what I'm saying? So I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I saw that. The, so the Prince of Persia remake which apparently was already in the works for like four years. They got, they gave it a release date of 2026. It's like, you guys realize this is a remake, right? Like you don't even actually have to like make the game from the ground up. The whole idea of the game is already created. What is taking so long? From what I'm to understand, they fucked it up and they had to start from scratch. Like, I guess they had one team working on it, but it was like really bad and inferior. So they basically scrapped the whole thing and they have another group doing it now. So it's kind of like a, a, a shit show development hell situation. <clears throat> Do I think we'll get Capcom versus SNK3? I have no idea. <clears throat> I mean, I would I would not be opposed to that to get another fighting game franchise that's prominent from Capcom. It's been a long time since we had two, right? It really has been. You had Street Fighter 4 and nothing else. Then you had Marvel's Capcom 3 and Street Fighter 4 at the same time. That was nice, even though I didn't like Marvel 3. It was still nice to have more than one fighting game, right? Then you had Street Fighter Cross Tekken, and that flopped miserably. Then you had just Street Fighter 5. They tried with uh, MVC Infinity or whatever the fuck it was called, and it flopped. So really, for the longest time, we've only had one Capcom fighter at a time. When I was growing up, it was the era of Capcom. You had, at any given point... Street Fighter 2, Street Fighter Alpha, the Versus series, then you had Street Fighter 3, all going on simultaneously. You had a delicious, ultra smorgasbord buffet of fighting game goodness from Capcom at all times. Do you like head-up fighting? Do you like action-paced, super-jumping, giant combo tagging in and out? Do you like a complex parry system with these little intricacies? Like, every game was so different and fun because of that. Today, it's like, are you playing Street Fighter 6? If not, I guess you're waiting for the next Capcom fighter in seven years. So I would love for them to have another fighter that's good, but that's the key factor. If they're going to make a CVS 3, they have to make it good. Maybe, you know what? Maybe don't call it CVS. Maybe call it something different, right? Like, don't, don't do CVS because that's... God, people say, oh, I can't play CVS 1 or 2, but 3 is out and that's the new one because that's going to happen. People are going to be like, oh, well, what about 1 and 2? Well, you can't even play those right now. Like, there's no versions of them you can play. So, I think they should just call something different. Make a new game. And maybe have SNK fighters, Capcom fighters, and other characters in it, too. That would be neat. <clears throat> what was my favorite non-Street Fighter fighting game? Um, okay. So, we're talking non-Street Fighter. Well... If you're saying non-Street Fighter, the Versus series, so particularly X-Men versus Street Fighter, Marvel versus Capcom 1 and 2, that would be my number two. Because right now, Super, uh, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Super Turbo is my favorite, but the Versus series is my second favorite. 
okay? <clears throat> if you mean completely outside the realm of Capcom entirely, then probably, uh, probably the King of Fighters. Because I played a lot of that in arcades back in the day. And then probably Tekken, although today I would play Tekken and I don't like King of Fighters anymore. I think Tekken is really good for a competitive game and has advanced and become much, much better over the years. While King of Fighters just kind of has floundered and sucks. Like, I hated King of Fighters 15. That game was terrible. Six seventy two. I'm not even going to entertain what you just said. Sorry. Metal Slug Tactics. You know, I don't know anything about this. Someone mentioned it the other day, but I didn't really know anything about it. I guess I would have to look into it. I don't really know what it, how it would play or what it would be or if anyone here would be interested in it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Double M. Today has been good so far, and Jasper is right here on the floor napping, and he's uh, relaxing and having a good time too. So we're all good. Have I ever had venison before? No. I don't think I've ever had deer. Nope. Would I consider playing online chess? Well, maybe. But I would have to I'd have to spruce up on chess again. I haven't played chess in a million years. I used to like it when I played it, but it's been so long I might have to remind myself how to play it. Abdullah says he got a second arcade stick called the Nikon Daija. What kind of a stick is that? Is it Japanese style? Is it what kind of buttons does it have? I don't know anything about it. I've never heard of a Nikon brand. Ugh. Oh my goodness. All right, guys, we're winding down. Last chance if you want to ask a question. Sarah just popped her 16-month membership notification. It was nice to see you make a friend. Brian's great. Yeah, keep in mind, Brian and I used to play stuff back in the day. Right? We did. We actually did. I, we did some fighting game stuff, but I, I think it was... Was it Injustice? It was either Injustice or, or Mortal Kombat or something that we played. I can't remember exactly which game it was. And like I said, we did Destiny 2. We did Apex Legends. We did a few things back then. I can't remember all of it, but I remember some of it, you know? Really what happened was, number one, I hated Street Fighter V, and that's just what everyone was playing for fighting games for a while, so I didn't care about that. And then the feedback I got from us doing co-op was the gameplay is good, the, the camaraderie is good, but there's no interaction with the stream chat anymore, and because of that, we're disappointed, and the streams started getting lower attendance and no support. So I said, all right, I'm going to stop doing it then. Like, that's the feedback I got years ago, and that's why we stopped. I Listen, I liked playing with Brian last night, but it, I wholeheartedly admit, there was no stream chat interaction whatsoever. I didn't talk with you guys at all. And if it weren't for that one big tip from Dan the Man, it also would have been a very low support stream because I wasn't talking with you guys, so there was no incentive to, to support. You see what I'm saying? So we've got to, if we're going to continue with this kind of content, we got to find that balance. So I still want to hang out with you guys and have a fun stream, but I also want to be able to have that attention with Brian and what we're doing. So it's kind of tricky. It's got to find that balance. It's going to be hard, I think. Uh, Goldfish, thanks for 12 months as a, as a member. I like Brian, too. He's a real bro. There you go. Follow the Candy says, Ever thought about using clips of funny moments from your playthroughs as an intro to your videos? Think of the YouTube algorithm video from yesterday. Yes, the YouTube algorithm video from yesterday essentially said when people first see your video in search or on a featured page and they hover over it, it shows a pretty old preview. And typically it's the first few seconds of the video. So whatever you're showing in the first few seconds is what people think your video is, right? So do something interesting in the first few seconds. <clears throat> I was like, well, you know, that's great. But the problem is with gameplay. What are you supposed to do, right? Like the gameplay, it's gameplay over the game you're playing, right? I'm doing raw gameplay. This is not an edited clips channel or anything like that. Right now, I stream, I record, and I upload, and then I take a break, and then I stream, I record, and I upload. That's my day. I don't sit in a video editor editing. I don't even have a video editor, okay? I don't. I have nothing, no software to even do that. <clears throat> in order to do what you're suggesting, every single video that I make would have to be run through an editor for a while because my videos are hour long. Probably take a couple hours to run it through an editor put in something at the beginning, 
as like a highlight to catch someone's attention who may be hovering over the video. Is that going to work? And that's the thing, like modern YouTube made so many choices and de design changes that someone like me who does a certain style of content just gets forgotten and brushed under the rug. Oh, well, I don't have the super flashy thumbnail. Oh, I don't have the clickbait title. Oh, I don't have a few seconds of something to catch you in the first few seconds of a, of a video because it's gameplay. So I guess I'm just bad now and I make terrible content, right? No, my content is still valid. The problem is YouTube changed to highlight other things. Is that fair to the people who've been making good, valid content for years and years that now we don't get featured because they decided to change? It's fucked up. That's what, that's what I was saying yesterday with the YouTube algorithm video. There was a whole video about how the YouTube algorithm works. And I said, the problem is YouTube changes everything over the years. So people who make positive, valid content literally get forgotten because it's the crappy, toxic content that this algorithm favors. They're not, they, they have humans making content, but they have no human factor in what gets popular on YouTube. Therefore, you find the biggest abusers and, and people who are the worst offenders of just being awful people being the most prominent, right? If you actually had a site with valid content, it would look very different than what YouTube is today, but they don't care because it's all automation, you know? And that's fucked up. see here yep the troll I, knew, I had a feeling this was a troll which is why i didn't read it out and it is so i'm not reading it out <clears throat> you can simply play a clip right after a part split if you encourage people to clip your streams you will have clips ready i don't even know what that means play a clip after a part split not sure how would that get into the on-demand video? I'm a little confused. Double M says, I guess modern YouTube expects everyone to hire a full-time editor. Literally old YouTube. Here was the idea of YouTube. Just think about the thing. You, a single individual with talent, but no production budget, no staffing, none of that. You can now have your own television station or tube, go tube TV. You can have your own television, you too. You have your own way to broadcast your talent across the internet with absolutely no help and production budget. That was the idea of YouTube, to give exposure to people with talent but don't have backing. Now YouTube is, you need to have a full editing team, a full production team, tons of money to invest in your videos so that they're giant stunts and shit that will get clickbait. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have to be going into this with the mentality that this is a ginormous business venture and have a fucking business planned and already designed to get popular on YouTube today. You can't just go in with, I have talent or I'm interesting or I have something to talk about or I'm an expert on a subject or yeah, I just want to enjoy a hobby of mine. None of that flies anymore. You have to go into it like you're fucking coming in with a million dollars to invest and hopefully it pans out to be a ginormous business venture. Now, who can do that? Rich people or people who have fucking other businesses already. This is not the idea of YouTube anymore, right? You, the person with no backing, broadcasting yourself to the internet, that's not even what YouTube is anymore. It's sad. They've literally lost their way. Why? Just like everything. As YouTube matures and changes and grows, they change everything and it hurts the little guy. It sucks. Skonkgasm, thank you for the membership. Appreciate that. Logie says YouTube isn't a charity, though. People who put in the most effort win. Wrong. Say right now. Wrong. You could put in an insane amount of effort and lose because you don't have money. That's what it is. Money. Look at the biggest videos on YouTube right now. Stunts. Do this ridiculous, ludicrous thing that no one could ever afford to do, but they afforded to do it. Here it is. Stunt. Oh, 50 billion views on the fucking video. Right? I traveled the world and did this and this because I'm rich. Giant video. I did. I buried myself and had a crack team of people there to do it and document it and make sure that I was healthy. Stunt video, you know? That's, that's what's popular on YouTube right now. You have to be rich. And then you get popular on YouTube by being rich. So it's not, that's not talent. That's financing. 
That's all it is. Fucking financing. And they all copy each other too because we saw that in one of the videos that I reacted to. Literally, there's like hundreds of these channels copying each other's ideas and stunts. And that's what's getting views on YouTube right now. It's all finance. Just, I have money. So I can throw money at YouTube and become rich. Even further rich. But the thing is, once you hit that YouTube algorithm, then you 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 do exactly what you need to do to stay pertinent, and then boom, you're done. You're done. You know what I mean? Like you hit that algorithm, and you go absolutely crazy with something, and then you just keep doing the crazy over and over, and then that's it. You never lose pertinence, and that's what they've done. These people have found that that method to do it. You know. Anyway, enough of that. <laughs> That's neither here nor there. It really doesn't affect me because I'm, you know me. I, I, I very rarely or ever hit the algorithm anymore. I don't really care. I have enough of a fan, a fan base and viewer base that I can stay uh, in business, which is great, and do what I love. I'm happy being who I am. I'm not looking to be some giant YouTuber, so I'm okay with this, you know? Sarah says, if you and Kat got into an RV and traveled across the states, you'd make so much bank from YouTube views. I mean, yeah, if I if immediately I won the lottery, right? And immediately I start doing big videos. DSP does this, DSP does that, and it's all rare stuff, things that normal people wouldn't fucking do. Yeah, those videos would be popular on YouTube. I'd have the thumbnail, I'd do the clickbait title, I'd do just everyone else, and boom, it would explode. The formula's there. The problem is no one could do that formula unless you're fucking rich already. <laughs> yes i do you don't have to win the lottery to do an rv channel yes i do i need the money i need the money to fucking buy the rv i need the money to finance the trip i gotta plan out all the travel reserve all the places we're staying spend money on food and all of that and i can't make regular content during that time frame so i need to be able to have money to pay all the bills while we do it yeah i need to be rich to do it i need to win the lottery All right, I think it's time for us to end the show for today. I want to say thank you all. You've been a great audience. Thanks for the support, the early support. Always appreciated. Uh, excited to see how Crow Country ends today. And I hope that you guys will stick around. Please, by all means, stick around for the gameplay portion of the stream, which is going to be great. The game has been outstanding so far. I can't wait to see what they throw at us here in the, in the end game. And uh, thanks for listening. Again, if I get any follow-ups regarding this false copyright nonsense situation, I will let everybody know. But that's where we're at right now. Okay? All right, guys. Thank you very much. Tomorrow, I look forward to possibly talking about Dragon Age because I want to see what they talked about today with that game and also anything that went down on today's streams, news, and the like. So thank you all. See you tomorrow.